to a Skype edition of The Laws of Life. I'm your host, Blanca Greenstein, and today joining us from Chico, California, is Sean Worthington, a scientist, author, and inventor of CloudCoin. He recently published a book called Beyond Bitcoin, The Future of Digital Currency. Welcome, Sean. Thanks for being on our show today. Oh, thanks for having me. So today, the goal of this uh, Skype opportunity with, with Sean Worthington is going to be to learn about what is the, co- the new Bitcoin or techno coin culture that we find ourselves in and to get a little education on that. So, Sean, just tell us a little bit about you. What do you currently do? Sure, I'm a tenured instructor at a community college. I teach computer science and have for about 17 years. I've been working on my uh, PhD in computer information systems. I'm all but dissertation. And while doing my dissertation, I realized that monetary systems are in fact information systems. We can take everything that we know about databases and information systems and apply it to money. And uh, so I took a side track and invented something and am now involved with this project called CloudCoin. So what is CloudCoin? Well, CloudCoin is the first cloud-based digital currency. And unlike Bitcoin, with Bitcoin, you have to have an account on a public ledger and you have to have a private key and a public key. These are like username and passwords. And so does the person that you want to send money to. But with CloudCoin, the cloud coins themselves have all of the username and passwords. And so people just pass money between themselves and don't have to log in or don't have to do anything that uh, requires them to create an account. So you are you are a professor at the community college Butte in Chico, California, right? That's you, right. You you've been teaching for 17 years. Yes. All right, so today I want you to teach our audience. Let let's go back Sure. Let's, let's go back to the basics. So okay. with respect to Bitcoin, how would you describe its purpose and benefits and and, and your opinion on that platform? Sure. Well, Bitcoin is the first digital currency to solve a problem. And that problem is called the physical integrity problem of digital money. And to illustrate it, I could talk about other digital currencies that have happened in the past that have failed. And so, for example, in California, we had a digital currency called eGold. And everybody took their gold and they put it in a vault. And then they issued these digital certificates against it. And everybody traded them. And there was billions of dollars worth of trade going on. But then a thief just busted down the door, took the vault, took all the gold, and shut the whole system down. And that thief was the state of California, unfortunately. And so it turns out that that digital currency, e-gold, although it worked great, it didn't have what's called physical integrity. Okay. Physical integrity involves a lot of different components, but one of those components is just the ability to not have your currency shut down. If you're based on some server and some government can come in and shut it down or some hacker can hack it, then it's no good. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the purpose of it, of a money or a monetary system in general is to track everybody's value that they put into the economy. And so if I create a whole bunch of value for the economy, I expect to get a whole bunch of value out. And we expect that a person that is not working and not creating any value, they cannot get any value out. And so part of physical integrity is making sure nobody can counterfeit. And with Bitcoin, it is possible to counterfeit, but you really have to work hard at it. You have to do something called Bitcoin mining in order to make new coins. (laughs) There's always fraud to every industry, isn't there? So what's... Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, You know, in theory, you don't want any fraud because if you can get get rid of fraud, then you've got a perfect system. What's your opinion on Bitcoin? Do you recommend it to our viewers? So Bitcoin was... The, the a currency that was the first one to solve these problems. And it was great because if you wanted to buy like a million dollars worth of oil in Venezuela, you could get Bitcoin and then you could send that Bitcoin to a Venezuelan person and you could get the oil and go around all of the tariffs that the Venezuelan government has and all the taxes that they have and all the rules and everything. And you also skip all the bank fees. But the problem is, is that the Bitcoin has a lot of problems. I I should say there's a lot of problems. One problem is that it's not scalable, and that's a computer science term, and it means that the more people that use it, the slower it gets. Okay. And right now, uh, the Bitcoin is able to handle about seven transactions per second, which is nothing 
for some kind of a, 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 global. a global currency or even a national currency. And so really it's only good for a small, really big transactions. Uh, because of the, uh, the, the way that it's done, which is encryption, they have to use a lot of processor cycles to encrypt and decrypt. That requires a lot of electricity. That generates a lot of heat, and then you got to cool things down, and that requires electricity. And so there's enormous amounts of electricity, enough to run cities that go into running the Bitcoin network. That's not going to work. It's not efficient. Plus, they use the public ledger system, which writes down everybody's uh, transactions. And so they've got this technology called the blockchain. It's a database. It's used to track who's got what money, and they have to track it from its inception. And do, so, do you view uh, Bit, do you view Bitcoin as a competitor of what you invented, Cloudcoin? It certainly is. Bitcoin is the what we call the first mover technology. It's the first one to get out there and show that the concept is true. And you can kind of think of it as MySpace, where Facebook then came along as the second mover solved a lot of problems that MySpace had and was able to dominate the field. So, so what, I feel what, that Bitcoin so, is that first mover and Cloudcoin is the second mover. Are you the only Cloudcoin in the world right now? Yes. When did you invent it? Uh, I invented it about, uh, I came up with the idea about two years ago. We actually put it into practice and created the RADA, which is a global counterfeit detection system, about a year and three months ago. And... How did you come up with the idea of Cloudcoin? Well, I was um, homeschooling my daughter, and I was teaching her philosophy. And so we were just studying. Actually, I didn't know much about philosophy. So we were studying together about 20 minutes every day for a year. And uh, that, you know, learning about Plato and, uh, and, and different ways of thinking of things gave me some new mental tools that I was able to use. And I was just in the bathtub one day wondering what is money because uh, Ben Bernanke, who was the chairman of the Federal Reserve, he said that gold is not money. You've got people that saying that Bitcoin is not money and people that are saying that even Federal Reserve notes are not money, that only gold and silver are money. And so you, you get this uh, debate about what is money. I was thinking about that and trying to figure out what the essence is. And of course, one of the most important things about money is that it can't be counterfeited. And then I realized that that's part of physical integrity and that in fact monetary systems are information systems and that money plays the role of data and it's a database. And so we have a bunch of rules in computer science already about how a database should be. And I figured out that I could just take those rules, apply them to a monetary system and that's how we created Cloudcoin. That's incredible. And then is, is your book beyond Bitcoin, the future of digital currency, all about Cloudcoin and about what its benefits are? Is that essentially the core of the book? I haven't had the opportunity to read it yet. So there's a lot that goes into my book. I talk about uh, what money is, so I redefine money because I think the definition that economists use is not correct, or at least not correct enough to be helpful and useful. I then go into my theory of perfect money. And so I describe what we would expect from the perfect currency. And so that's something new to mankind. And then I go into future scenarios. And there's uh, scenarios in which we use something like Cloudcoin, and which is 100% private. There's no way that people can track your transactions, at least um, not with the money itself. And so that... Uh, gives us a, a future that is quite a bit different than the blockchain future, which Venezuela has now created their own blockchain currency, and so has China, and they're doing some very nasty things with that. So in China, they've got a currency in which every time you buy or sell something, it will actually record your GPS location because wow. you use your cell phone, mm -hmm. and they'll record what you bought, uh, how much it cost, who you bought it from, and they will know exactly how much money you have, and they can even tax you and redistribute wealth wow, and so that's crazy. I call that blockchain socialism that that sounds extraordinarily intrusive oh it's absolutely treating people like they're animals and that they're just there to be milked and it makes it very convenient for them to do that so uh, meanwhile me cloudcoin does the exact opposite I think that so let me ask you a question is is um, if you had to say what the number one benefit of cloudcoin is what would it be 
So the number one benefit, and, and there's so many different benefits, but uh, it's the fact that it's private. Uh, well, I, I should say, you know, maybe the, I think the, the biggest benefit is probably that it's global. And so we don't have a global currency except for the dollar. Uh, but the dollar, of course, is something physical and you can't trade it with anybody else in the world. But with CloudCoin, we can trade day or night with anybody in the world over our computers, just like we're paying with cash. No bank fees, no transaction fees, no tariffs, no taxes, and 100% privacy as far as the money goes. So it's, uh, the, the globalness, is, I think, is the, the number one thing. What was the most difficult thing about establishing the CloudCoin platform? Well, we had to invite, we had to invent a new data structure that would be able to do what we wanted it to do. And so the biggest problem or the biggest uh, achievement with Bitcoin was the creation of what's called the blockchain. The blockchain, you can write to it, you can read from it, but you cannot go back and delete records and you cannot change the records. And so that's why the blockchain always grows. It's 165 gigabytes with Bitcoin. It's a terabyte with Ethereum and it's getting bigger and bigger. You can't fit it on a hard drive anymore. <laughs> but, but with CloudCoin, we did created a different data structure that instead of tracking all the transactions, what it is, is it's a counterfeit detection system. Got it. And so let me ask you a question. Who did you, sure. who did you use to create to, to, to code this platform? Cause I mean, I mean, I know you're a professor, you're an inventor, you're an author, but I imagine you have a technological team that helped you create the technology behind the concept. So there's a lot of programming that goes into it. There's the data structure itself, the RADA, and then there's the client software and different services that wrap around that. Uh, I personally wrote the back end, the, all of the first server, uh, the, the cloud software for the RADA, and I personally wrote uh, one of the, the console applications that was a client. But now we have about, I don't know, 17 programmers that are working on everything. And so I don't do the programming directly anymore, but uh, I did I certainly did it to begin with. How much capital did you need to start Cloud Point? Well, that's the interesting thing about this is that because we made our own money, we didn't need capital, and so we didn't have to raise any money. We spent, or we're, we are spending, and have spent CloudCoin into existence. Well, that's so incredible! We wow. So that is, you know, that shows that CloudCoin is a real money. It's not. So we didn't have to sell stock or find investors or anything like that. That's, we, that's um, extraordinary. Got it. Cool. So we're going to see you on MSNBC very soon. Well, I was on Fox Business News a couple Sundays ago, so. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if I was on MSB, uh, you that's, know, the, the mainstream media. I was on Newsmax as well. That's incredible. It's such an honor to meet you. You really are a revolutionary. You met this gentleman, Mr. Sean well, Worthington, on The Laws of Life. And he is the author, once again, of Beyond Bitcoin, The Future of Digital Currency. He is also the inventor of CloudCoin. And where can where can our viewers find find you on the web to learn more about you? Well, there's a lot of places uh, that they can go to cloudcoin.global, which is our website that we're getting, we're redesigning right now. But they can also get a free copy of my book if they go to a website called digitalfrontiernews.com and sign up for their newsletter. That's a marketing partner. And they'll get five free cloud coins that they can play with as well. Great. And they can go to my website, seanworthington.com. That is. Or just Google CloudCoin. That's phenomenal. So everybody, I hope you learned something today. I know I did. Thanks for watching this Skype version of The Laws of Life and have a great day.